Hi guys, this is Russ, Sailing Vessel Tau Tug. Current location is Fort Pierce, Florida. Status is at anchor. And uh, we'll get right into it. Uh, this episode is going to cover the exit from the boatyard. And moving into Faber Cove and a couple, you know, pretty much a very busy week in the life of Faber Cove Anchor Fleet personnel. And we, we had a lot going on, so I'll show you some of the boat projects I've been working on. And then we're going to ride through uh, Hurricane Adalia, uh, which did not present any real danger, but it's still something that kind of focused us for a couple of days. So let's get to it. Okay, so this clip is increased in speed by eight times, and um, they just released the straps, which freed me to go. And you'll see a couple of gentlemen with a boat hook still tugging at my bow, which I really don't care for, but they're trying to help. <laughs> and, uh, and see, I expected my stern to move to starboard, which it did initially, as you can see. But once the stern got stuck out in the Taylor Creek, I was surprised that the current, which I thought was still inbound, was outbound. It took me pretty hard, so I got set pretty hard to port, and it was really very difficult for me to try to swing the bow to port. So I decided instead to do a U-turn and turn the whole boat to starboard. Mm -hmm. Oh, that tide is ripping. He's going to have to do a full U-turn. I think after this I'm getting set hard to return. One thing I really like to do is to drive boats in almost any circumstance, power driven, sailboat, whatever. I do like driving around and I like maneuvering in tight quarters like this. In this case, again, as I said before, it was a, a bit of a surprise to have to do a right turn, like a 270 right here in the Taylor Creek, but whatever, it's deep enough, it's wide enough, and it was no issue. And the only thing that could have been a problem is if there had been boats coming, because sometimes the tugboats in here they'll go pretty fast and they don't yield very well and that's just another marina across the creek and once we complete this turn we're heading out to sea and heading over to Faber Cove Hey guys, sitting here back in my favorite place in Fort Pierce to anchor, which is called Faber Cove. Excuse me, this is where I rode out Hurricane Nicole with Lionel, Michelle, and Ross and the big boat, and a few other folks. Excuse me, you know, really, I mean, I look back on that as a positive experience. I enjoyed, you know, getting to know these folks, one thing, and the way we worked together was pretty good. So, um... So I'm here and I'm kind of relaxing because you can anchor with confidence here. You don't get waked by big power boats. You don't deal with that tidal current rushing in and out, twisting your chain on Lord knows what. And it's just a big gooey mud bottom. So the chain's going to come up impregnated with this gray mud that looks like it's got adhesive in it. But in the meantime, I'm not dragging. So, 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 
it's the time to do projects, right? And one of the projects is clean out these darn cockpit lockers because I need to put dive gear in here somewhere. So this one has held all the, there's a, the last bottle over there, uh, the black one, is waste oil. This is regular four-stroke gasoline. This is mixed two-stroke gasoline. And I know what you're going to say. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, and that's insecticide. That's the generator. There's a short power cord. Extra pieces of aluminum and stainless steel. Uh, the tubing, you just never know. And the black box has got a battery isolator. It's got a couple of hull fittings. It's got a spare gray water tank. And there's a spare Danforth anchor in there. this locker I'm actually planning to do the following. I'm going to remove all the junk, take out the top shelf and cut a line right about here to reduce the thickness the width of this top shelf. It has been handy to store stuff in I admit and I do I'm a, there's a chance I'll regret this clever move of mine um, but it makes it so difficult to get things underneath it and it'll, it'll greatly improve my storage down there and that's where the dive tanks are going to go on the bottom somehow some way if I can make this smaller okay so what do we got here if we have old piece of fire hose and you're wondering what in the hell would that be doing on a boat and what possible utility could it have it doesn't have the brass ends on it this they had already been chopped off when I got it old fire hose can be very handy because you can pass mooring lines up the center of the hose on small pieces like that and when you're tying to a cleat that might have rough edges or to your own bow roller, things like that, um, these will be chafing guards. It protects your lines. Now let me show you inside the boat an example of a line that was not protected. And this is an example of a line that had been in service and it was just fine, even though it was one of my freebie lines. I didn't pay for this line. But you can see it wore through the outer jacket on the double braid. It damn near cost me the whole line, and all because I didn't have anti chafing protection. So, we're going to fix that problem. For, okay, so hopefully you can see the water level. Let's kick on the switch and see if it pumps. If it makes just a sound, that means it's not pumping, and you'll see the water doesn't go down. If you hear the, the gurgling type sound, and, and you'll see the water level going down, that's what we're looking for. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. That's the correct sound. See the level going down? And I've got my vacuum, so I'm going to suck up the remaining crud down there. It should shut itself off. And it did. Okay, so now I'm going to shut the camera off for a second. So I'm going to reach in here and just kind of manipulate this to try to get all the crud into a place where I can get it with a vacuum cleaner, especially the big chunkies. But first, I'm going to pour some of my automotive degreaser in there. Because it was greasy. It was greasy. And that's my fault. I don't remember putting grease down there, but I guess I must have. The bottom line is the thing lost a prime. It just would not prime itself. And it was one nasty ass mess. Yuck. And just so you know, the water you see going in is going to be seawater. So when I have the switch off right now. The breaker on the breaker panel is in the off position. Uh, and I'll show you in a second here. So anything I spill out of here is really not catastrophic, right guys? So anything that gets outside the tank onto the yellow bilge floor, that's going to, just by gravity and by sloping of the bilge and by the fact that I'm pretty much an even keel boat, um, it's going to work its way to the main bilge eventually. Um, anyway, so in case you don't know, this big hose here, this one here, that's the drain from the kitchen sink and it goes into the tank in the back there. The little white hose, it's a bottom, bottom left there, I can't touch it. Uh, see the black round thing? That's the pump. And at the base of that, there's a little three-quarter inch hose coming out. That's the discharge. So it operates just like a bilge pump. There's really nothing else to it. Except 
except I made a freaking mess on my cabin. Traipsing around salt water, plus before that the scum water. And now I'm just gonna, gonna do the degreasing thing. So the problem statement was this morning, I heard the pump motor running, but I can tell just by the sound it makes that it wasn't pumping water. As if it had gotten airbound somehow. And these, you think a bilge pump, if anything, or a gray water pump, if anything, would be freaking self priming, but they're not. It's not this brand. This is Johnson Pumps SPX Flow. I think you'll see them online. And I thought I was very disappointed with this. The strainer again. This thing was clogged up pretty good. It's a miracle anything got into the tank. So there we go. Now I'm going to put a little more soap in there, just dish soap, I think, this time. And then I add about half a gallon of water. Um, and fresh water is pretty precious, but it'll be fresh water this time. And I'm going to leave the switch off and just let it sit there for a while. Because when I have it sucked completely dry, like I do now, the pump might lose its prime. So we're definitely going to add the thing, probably make it almost full of water with soap in it and degreaser. And then we're going to do a test run again to make sure it's still primed. Then, I can walk away from this job. So stand by. Here comes the dish soap. Okay, a little dish soap is always... Uh, I hate to find this out now. I hate to find this out, say, a month from now. Okay, so there's a degreaser. I'll just take it. So, okay, here comes fresh water. This is our uh, rainwater I've collected, so in fact, this morning it's earlier this morning, that's a half a gallon, that's all I can spare. We're gonna turn on the switch and we're just gonna see if it primes. Okay, so here we go. One That's exactly the sound I didn't want to hear. So you heard that me, I'll do it again. So that's the sound of the pump rotating in its housing, but the pump itself, the plastic, the red plastic housing is actually full of air. So sometimes you can solve that, honestly, just by, you know, sometimes you can do this. Did y'all see what I did? If that wasn't clever, you just write it in the comment section. <laughs> Racing for the next one. There's already a lot of debris in the water. There's Lionel over here. And I don't have my anchor light on yet, but I should do that. Here we go, Lionel! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a piratey life we live. <laughs> and, yeah, you can't be afraid of it. And yeah, I mean, I think Cameron's a little discouraged at the moment because his freaking dinghy flipped upside down with his engine on it, and I feel responsible for that one. But all in all, this is pr a pretty cool life. It, I mean, you know, and so that's the question. So, if you told me right this minute I could trade places and not have a boat and have tons of money and be living in some condo in Thailand or something where life is just easy every friggin' minute of the day, yeah, that's cool, but you also don't have like a reason to wake up. You don't have a reason to live. You don't have any zip. You don't have any energy. It's, you just exist, you know? And what we're doing now, writing out this, what I would say, is it going to be a strong hurricane over there on the west coast of Florida? But that's friggin' 200 miles away from us, and we're riding. And I'm calling. I'm, I'm, I hesitate to even say we're riding it out. But these bands that blow through, you know, this we had one about two hours ago, and it was freaking violent. I mean, it was incredible. It healed some of the boats over enough when the wind came from the 90 degrees to the starboard. We were all pointing straight south at the time, and the wind just hit us from the west. 
and some of the boats healed over enough that it, one guy fell down inside so I'm kind of curious to see how this one goes so if any of you have been watching the channel for a while you remember at one point back when I was in st. Petersburg I still had the old dinghy the old um, you know Bugsley <laughs> and that one and I had that two horsepower engine but at some point I was being really clever and I managed to drop my two horsepower engine into the salt water in the marina in St. Petersburg and I I mean it almost made me sick to my stomach I was like oh my god that's like a thousand dollars of engine blah 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 and, and it's under salt water and it's dead now and I'm gonna need to buy a new engine and I was upset about that but I recovered the engine by I, I, laid, I stayed underwater for about 35 hours or more, and I took it out, and when I finally got it up on the dock, I rinsed it off. I squirted water everywhere that salt water could have gone, and then I squirted WD-40 every place else, and I drained the fuel system, or parts of it, to sample it for water, and I started up on the first crank. So, when this storm passes later tomorrow, I think by tomorrow afternoon, the worst will certainly be over, and we'll, we'll be done getting these bands of rain. And we're going to try some kind of operation with uh, Cameron's motor. Looking out in front of us, that way, is uh, the, what's in front and what's coming our way. And that should be, looking at the radar, those big uh, large cumulus uh, formation, that should be past us in about an hour or two. And then that should be the end of it. And then we'll be back to steady 15 knot winds the rest of the night. It'll slowly die down tonight. So. Uh, we have one member of our fleet who's new to this and I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it to some degree I mean it's it's nerve-wracking if you're new at it it's, uh, it's 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 irritating to me because I can't do anything else I mean I can't take the dinghy ashore because I could never manage my dinghy in these kind of conditions my dinghy is like a balloon it's very lightweight it has enormous pontoons and a little two horse motor, I could never advance that direction against this wind. I could never even make it sideways. I would be getting blown so hard downwind, just like a piece of floating trash. And I'd end up over there, stuck in the docks. So my dinghy is still not even in service. I have my, I have my dinghy, you know, flooded with a plug out, with the engine up on the rack. We're not even contemplating going ashore today. Maybe in a few hours, I suppose, if the wind really died down, but I'm not expecting to go ashore today. <laughs> yeah, so this is a shout out to my friends up in Crystal River. I know you guys took it a lot worse than I got. I mean, I'm kind of bitching about having, you know, steady 20 to 25 knot winds here with gusts up to 35 and 40. I would, that's a guess, you know, but I don't, ha I don't have an anemometer, but uh, over in Crystal River, they were just south of landfall, and they they probably all took a hundred mile an hour winds. You know, and it's a very low lying area. I mean, their homes are all like that, ground level homes that are not built on stilts. So probably a large number of people have flooded homes. A lot of people are going to be displaced, and with those wind strengths, uh, a, a lot of roofs ripped off and stuff like that. So I'm very grateful to have such a to catch a break and. You know, it kind of doesn't feel like a break because I'm unable to do anything. I'm just bouncing around, checking my chart plotter, making sure I'm not dragging, but um, I, I still kind of caught a break here. Someday I'll bring a Here's to Jimmy Buffett. Life well lived. I woke up this morning feeling a little, a little bit subdued, and I was, I had been planning to go to the uh, flea market or something, but, um, you know, to look for little bargains. Just didn't feel like doing much. And then I found out just a few minutes ago that Jimmy Buffett passed away last night. So, a glass of rum. Here's to you, Jimmy Buffett. Well, this is the port side of sailing vessel Teltog, and that's my final version of the camouflage and dazzle paint. And obviously I went with bright orange for the top side color, the top stripe, to replace the burgundy, which I did not care for. The um, On the starboard side of the boat um, is pretty much the same type of deal, but it's a different paint scheme, of course. 
you know, same same orange on top and basically the same dazzle camouflage, but a different pattern. The top side of the deck has not yet been painted yet. Uh, the the roof, the cabin top, whatever you want to call it, and that's because I needed to get some sand from the beach, which I just got, and uh, I'll use that to mix in with the paint to make a non-skid surface. Other than that, I think we're pretty good. So this is Russ. This is sailing vessel Tautog. It's she's a CSY 37, six foot draft, 37 feet long, 12 foot beam. And a uh, pretty good ship, you know, and uh, our focus now is to continue watching weather as always, and this is September 3rd as I speak now, and you know, that means in Florida you have to watch the hurricane situation, and there is another storm that is currently moving off the coast of Africa. It hasn't even gotten a name yet, but uh, it probably will, and it probably will become a hurricane. And exactly where it goes, we don't know. I believe it's headed for the Northern Caribbean, which means Florida could very well be you know, something that hits the Bahamas and Florida. So uh, um, we're just going to wait and see. If the storm does not make a direct landfall on me, it may very well provide some north or northeast winds that will allow me to escape this port of Fort Pierce and run down south, south of Miami into Biscayne Bay and maybe on down to... Uh, Marathon or Key West, which is where I want to spend the winter. So, um, with that, I have no other comments. I appreciate the, you sticking with this video. It is a longer video than I normally put out, and I just had a lot of stuff to show you that was going on all this past week. So, with that, guys, cheers. I appreciate you watching, and I really appreciate the comments. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.